<clears throat> All right, so in this step, what I'm doing is I'm making a hole or a pass through for my cables to go from where the TV is into the wall and into the side of the cabinet so that on the inside of the cabinet I can run cables, uh, you know, the power cables to all the things like my Comcast box or my VCR, my DVD player, uh, my Android TV, uh, maybe a laptop if I want to stick it in there, whatever. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm starting out, I bought this, you know, just a, a pass through grommet and I know about where I need to put it. So I'm going to come and draw a circle. Once I have my circle, I'm just going to grab one of my spade bits because I need to start a hole and then we'll use our other saw to cut the rest of it out. Once we got the, the starter bowl, I'm just going to use a jigsaw and uh, cut the rest of the hole out. And you do this because uh, you know you don't want to end up uh, messing your hole. So I have a line follow, and uh, we'll be done just on it. So usually what I do is I'll I'll cut it in a crisscross pattern. That way, as I cut it off, the piece will fall through, and I don't have to worry about jagged edges. Once you got your hole cut, uh, if it's too rough, you can always sand it down. Um, but because I'm putting a grommet in here, I'm not really worried about those edges. You know, if, if I was not, then I would sand them down because you, you feed cords through in the wall. Um, you don't want anything to get snagged, especially if it's electrical. So I'm going to put this grommet in here. You can see that right here where the grommet is. And I think that will be perfect for running cables. The next thing we're going to have to do is uh, pull these shelves out and I'm going to have to actually drill holes through the bottoms of them uh, because um, each shelf, obviously, you know, if I'm, running, if I'm running power cords or HDMI cables, whatever, um, I have to get away to go from one shelf to the other and I don't want to come out the front. Uh, it's going to kind of defeat the purpose of building this media cabinet, right? You don't want, to, you don't want all the, the messy spaghetti cables laying everywhere. So I'm going to pull these shelves out that I put in earlier and I'm going to drill some holes in the back, you know, just a, a small cutout and um, we'll go from there. Alright, so now what I'm doing, I pulled my shelves out and I am going to etch the back or put a, put a slot in the back of each shelf so that when I'm running wires um, they can go behind the shelves, I don't want to come out the front. So I know that my board is about 20 and a quarter. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come in about four inches on each side and um, probably make about a uh, inch, inch and a half inch deep cut um, and then just take it down, you know, the whole length of the board on either side so that I get a nice gap behind the shelf um, for those power cables to go up and through. I'm doing four inches here. inches there so I want to make this kind of nice and so what I'm gonna do uh, I don't just want like a straight square cut because that that doesn't really look nice and you know I don't want uh, cables to get caught on edges or anything like that so I'm gonna do four inches in on either side and I'm gonna get something like a, a mason jar to make a curve and uh, take that down the length of the board and then all we'll do is just use this board as a template for the other shelf and uh, put these back in all right so what I've done is I've made a four inch Four inch in line on either side and a one and a half inch line up and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a cup you can really use anything to make the arc um, just so that it looks nicer than just a, a square cut so all I'm doing is just putting putting the arc on one side 
trying to make sure that the uh, that it goes all the way to the uh, the line. And this is a nice a nice look to it. You know, you don't want to. You can have a straight cut if you want, but you know nobody's going to see this, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But um, I'd rather have a, have an arcing um, line instead of a just a square cut. I'm gonna have to make some changes to this box. Um, I was getting ready to put it back together. And you can see I pulled the shelves out. I'm actually painting those right now, and I'll be painting this box also. And uh, I got to thinking, you know, equipment. Uh, it's not it's not a lot of equipment, but it's enough to, um, you know, things are always on, like like cable boxes. They're always on. So I was thinking about cooling things. Of course, the wind is gonna blow now. Um, so what I've done is I've, I've ordered and picked up a fan, or ordered a fan, it came in today, and I'm going to mount it on the back side of this, and it will connect to the power strip that we're going to install, and basically that's just to keep air flowing through the box to uh, remove heat, because uh, as we all know, heat and electronics is not a good thing, it's a good way to burn things out um, and, and drastically lower their lifespan. So I'm going to get started on that, and uh, we'll get some measurements done and put the fan in. All right, so the fan that I picked up is actually made by a company called Axial. And I got this because it's pretty quiet. Um, I have my plug here, so I'm actually just gonna move my camera over. Um, but I wanted to make sure that when I put a fan in, um, you know, I don't want that to be a distraction or some weird background noise. So this is how loud this fan is. So this is the, the fan in my hand. Set it down so I don't break it. Plug it in. So it's not a loud fan at all, which is which is perfect. And this is the uh, Axial 1225. I ordered it on Amazon. I'll put the link down below uh, just so that we have everything. Um, so I'm gonna get find a spot that I want to put it on the box. And go get my tools, and we're gonna cut a hole. This fan is square, like most fans that come out. Uh, it's got a center circle, so I want to make sure that it's not between my shelves. I know that there's a shelf here, and there's a shelf here. I want to make sure that it's not, you know, stuck between them because we are gonna be cutting a hole in the back. So my main goal is to really make it level, and then we're gonna cut the hole out just big enough for the, the fan part. And there's a mesh screen that we'll be putting over here shortly. So we're going to make sure that we have it level. And we're going to... So you can see the box. So I know where the edges are going to go. I'm going to lay it flat again. And I'm going to trace... I'm going to put my pen in and just trace around each piece. So I'm going to put my pencil in and just trace around each curve and then put them together and then we're going to run through there with a drill to drill it out and then a saw so that we can get the size and then we'll put the mesh on so that we can hook up the fan. All right, so now that I've traced it right here, we're going to go get a paddle bit, drill through the middle, and then jigsaw it out so that we have a nice round hole, and then we'll be able to mount this up. So we keep getting airplanes flying over, and our new house is right in the middle of a flight path through a local airfield. So we're going to make it work anyway. So 
next we're just going to take a saw, follow the lines, and cut out the circle. We have to lay this down so that we can do that. So I can already see that I'm going to have an issue because my saw doesn't, it's too big. So once I get part of this cut out, we're going to have to just put the fan over it, drill the holes where the, the screws are going to go, and then on the back side we'll have to redraw the circle so that we can cut it back out. We're just going to use a uh, 5 64ths. All I'm doing are making three quick pilot holes so that we can flip this around uh, so that we can draw a circle again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to connect the fan. I have my hole drilled. I can actually stand my stand my box back up. I don't need to see what this one is. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just lining up the, the fan cover, making sure that all the holes are aligned right, which they are. And this particular fan came with some rubber washers, so I'm actually going to put those between the fan and the box because I don't want this thing to be vibrating and to be super loud. We'll test this all out in a minute. pushed all the way through. So we put these nuts on it. And the mosquitoes out here are ridiculous. It just rained. And this is all a rough fit because I'm going to have to pull this out uh, because I'm going to paint the box, right? I'm going to paint the inside so it's not just a bare piece of wood. You know, I'm going to put a nice white finish on it because it's going to look like a built-in. So, you know, we don't want it to be some ugly eyesore. And we're going to hook up power to it. And there we go. The fan is running. You can barely hear it. It's, uh, not vibrating against the box, so it's quiet. And uh, so that's that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to throw a coat of paint on it, just the inside of the box. I don't need to paint the outside because that's all going to be inside the chimney. Uh, I'm just going to use some uh, semi-gloss. Um, I'm using the off smart paint. You can really use anything. I'm sure there's kind of special. You know, there might be special paint around, but um, I have this. So if I didn't have paint, I'd go buy paint. I just happen to have some white paint, so that's what I'm going to use. So thanks to the paint, one thing that I found is I have gaps. And so what I'll be able to do 
after this first coat of paint dries is I'll come back with some color and I'll fill those gaps and then repaint them. Unfortunately from this point, it appears that my video documentation uh, recording of this uh, corrupted and so all I have are some still pictures of the process that I went through uh, putting the cabinet in and mounting it up and then adding the cabinet door, painting it and making sure everything looks nice. Now that we've completed painting and priming, we will pick up some glass once the measurements are done uh, from a local shop, maybe Lowe's or Home Depot, and we will get that measured out. We'll put some sealant in, put the glass in, put some brackets in so that the glass doesn't fall back out and get this mounted on the wall.